first of all, it wasn't – most of our job loss had nothing to do with cutbacks at the federal level. I mean, if you look, Virginia is just as impacted by cutbacks at the federal level as Maryland is, and they're booming. Their economy's booming. Um, we – when uh, when Bob Ehrlich was governor, we had 13 Fortune 500 companies headquartered here. We now only have three. Uh, now, three of them, I think, dropped from Fortune 500 down to Fortune 1000, so they just changed their designation, but the rest of them actually left. Um, we only have three, you know, big companies headquartered here. Virginia has 24. There are 10 of them just in Fairfax County, and some of them are former Maryland companies. Um, so you can't say that it was just the federal. Certainly, the federal cutbacks impact us, but Virginia's impacted, and their economy's growing, and they're getting more businesses and more jobs and more taxpayers and more revenues. And we're not, and we're right next door. So there's a reason for that, right? There's a difference between Maryland and Virginia that people are making a conscious decision. Should we go to Maryland or should we go to Virginia? And they're all deciding to go to Virginia. And I think uh, from what I'm hearing, and we've been working on this for three years, and we've talked to people all across the state. We've held seminars and summits. We've done exhaustive research. We're the ones that totaled up the impact. We've, we're the ones that identified the loss of the companies. We're the ones that totaled up the 6,500. We're the ones that did the taxpayer exodus that, that everyone talks about now, by the way. Doug Gansler, and every, everywhere he goes in every speech, somebody said he was channeling me at the debate. He, it's all our stuff. His, his economic plan cites Change Maryland as the source of his information. Um, so we've been working on this and passionate about it for a long time. There's basically three issues. I mean, first of all, Maryland is a wonderful place. We have so many, so many advantages over almost any other state. You know, we have this fantastic location in the heart of the Mid-Atlantic region. We've got wonderful uh, universities and colleges. We've got good schools for the most part. The, the Port of Baltimore, the Chesapeake Bay, BWI, good transportation infrastructure. In spite of all those things, you know, our economy's failing, and we're not recovering like most of the other states in the country, and we're 44th out of 50 states in, our, in, in economic rankings, and we're 41st out of 50 states in business friendliness, and that's one of the issues. There's basically three self-inflicted wounds that are killing us economically. Uh, one is business friendliness, and that's one that's fairly easy to, to, to correct. CEO magazine ranked us as 41st out of 50 states in business friendliness. And I think it's, it's a perception that almost everyone has that Maryland isn't welcoming to business. And when you cross over the bridge into Virginia, there's a huge sign that says, welcome to Virginia, we're open for business. And I can tell you, I've talked to CEO after CEO after CEO that's either thinking of moving out of the state or already has moved out of the state or is trying not to move out of the state, and they say, we don't feel welcome. We, we, we feel an openly hostile attitude from our state government, uh, and it's, it's a documented fact. So a new governor um, with a new attitude that says Maryland is open for business and changes the attitude and says we need business. I want, here's my primary focus. I want to help Maryland businesses grow and create more opportunities and more jobs for our citizens. I want to make it more attractive for more companies to want to come to Maryland to provide more opportunities and more jobs for our citizens. It also brings in more tax revenues to help us pay for all the other services that we need to pay for. When you have a declining tax base and you have fewer and fewer employers and fewer and fewer jobs and fewer and fewer taxpayers, how do we pay for the essential services that other people need? You can't, it can't continue like this. So business friendliness, we appoint a whole new cabinet with guys who have a different directive. And our directive is how do we help people grow in Maryland? You know, how do we keep families in Maryland? How do we keep businesses in Maryland? How do we get more businesses and families to want to move to Maryland instead of move out of Maryland? That's, it sounds simple, but that's, it's an attitude, and it will permeate state government. Two, we talked about our tax structure. We're not competitive with the other states in our region. We're too expensive. Um, if, if businesses are making decisions about where to locate or where to expand, they do it based on economics primarily. So they're saying, you know, we're just going to make the decision to go to Virginia. We, we talked about the jobs and businesses we lost, but we, it's hard to calculate how many people decided not to come. You know, many of the companies just, we're like a flyover state. And they say, I can, we had one example. We talked to a, a guy who was talking about Northrop Grumman. They were trying to convince them to come to Maryland. The guys basically said, save your breath. Don't even bother to send me the information. We're not the least bit interested in coming to Maryland. We're moving our corporate headquarters to Virginia. Uh, we're not welcome in Maryland. That was, the, that was the attitude they got. Um, so that's, the tax structure has to be changed. We have to be more competitive. We can't have, if, we're, if our corporate tax rate is 8.25 and Virginia's six and New York is six, it's kind of hard to compete. 
if we're raising uh, the personal income tax on every small business owner, uh, you know, most small business owners, uh, are, their income passes through to their personal income tax return. So they have their subchapter S or an LLC. They're not big corporate entities. We're not talking about millionaires and billionaires. We're talking about mom and pop stores, small businesses with one or two employees. And first we raised the, you know, the so-called millionaires tax and we lost one third of the revenues. Um, then we said that works so well, let's, let's do the 100,000 heirs tax. Well, that was a lot of small business people that closed up their doors or said, we have to get rid of the few employees we have, or we're going to go to Delaware. We're going to go to West Virginia. We're going to go to Pennsylvania. We can't do our business here. So we've got to be more attractive on a, from a tax standpoint. Uh, all these 40 tax increases have an impact uh, on individuals and on businesses. And then lastly, it's our regulatory policy. And I hear that over and over and over again, that it's so difficult to do things in Maryland, that the processes take so long that we have a constantly changing and unpredictable regulatory process that you know they get a different answer every day from a different person. And they go, we just want to know what the rules are so we can do our business plan, so we can decide if we can grow. And they get they feel as if they can never get a straight answer out of state government. It takes years longer to get approvals for things here than it does in other places. You talk to people about, hey, this took me, after three years of trying to get all the approvals in Maryland, we just gave up. We got it done in 90 days in Virginia. You know, that's, that's the kind of thing. And some of it's the bureaucracy, but it's the, it's the regulatory environment, the tax structure, and the anti-business attitude. And all three of those have to change. Now, two of them can change pretty rapidly. Uh, in the executive branch, the business attitude can change almost from day one. The regulatory environment, you know, a lot of that can be, you know, done uh, in the executive branch. Uh, these regulations are promulgated by agencies and we'll try to bring more stakeholders to the table and come up with common sense solutions and, and reach agreement among the parties and uh, not just blindly put out regulations that are going to decimate an entire industry without thought, which is, uh, and then the taxes, we're not going to be able to get done, as we said earlier unless we can get buy-in from the legislature. And so we've got to run the government more efficiently. We've got to get more tax revenues coming in by stimulating businesses and getting more jobs. And then I've got to do a great job of convincing Mike Miller and Mike Bush and their colleagues uh, that it's worth thinking about rolling back some of these things and providing some tax relief for our citizens. It's going to take using the bully pulpit. It's going to take convincing them that an overwhelming majority of Marylanders can't take it anymore. I think if I were to be elected governor, they might get a little bit of a message that People in Maryland were kind of, you know, not happy with the direction. Maybe we ought to think about not continuing to increase taxes, right? It'd kind of be a wake-up call. Uh, but I, I'm not naive enough to think it's going to be easy. I mean, it's a tremendous, uh, that's what we talked about these guys just saying, oh, we're, with it, right away we're going to eliminate this tax and we're going to eliminate that tax. It's not that simple. Um, it, it's, it's just running things better, getting more tax revenue coming in and stop wasting money.